Hey guys, welcome to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to find a meat supplier. Stay tuned. Hey guys, uh, welcome to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. I'm excited to be doing these again. And uh, today I want to talk about how to find a meat supplier. Um, so when I say that, I mean, yeah, we can all just go to the grocery store and buy meat, you know, but sometimes quantity and price can be unreliable. Um, you know, you might go this week and they might have a sale on pork loins and have two of them in the case, you know, because they ran out. And uh, I mean, it might be cheap, but let's say that I wanted to cook a bunch of pork loins. How do I, how do I go about finding a bunch of pork loins, you know, and, and finding a good price from them things? So when I say meat supplier, we're going to be talking about a higher volume more regularly. So it could be like, uh, let's say you're catering, for instance, and you're wanting to start uh, doing pulled pork and brisket, uh, maybe alternating, maybe doing a little bit of each each time. So you're going to get a better price by the case, which a case of pork butts is going to be, depending on who you get it from, is going to be eight butts. The case of briskets is going to be typically five, depending on what grade you're buying. Um, so if you're buying like choice or, or um, you know something like that, you're probably going to get five briskets. So um, whereas if you buy wagyu, there might only be two in a case, you know, just because they're wagyu. So how do I how do I identify who in my area could be a reliable, affordable? Uh, supplier. So we're going to start off with the relationship. Basically, you got to get to know somebody. So go in and, and start asking a few questions. You know, some of them will will ask you to get some kind of an account set up with them. Um, you know, they might hand you a uh, an application form. Like if you go to Cisco or U.S. Foods or somebody like that, um, you know, they're going to hand you a credit app and an account application form. Well, I mean, you're going to have to do quite a bit of meat, you know, to buy to make that worth it, right? Um, if you go like to a local, uh, you know, USDA inspected, let's say that, a USDA inspected meat supplier, what that means is that they can kill meat, they can kill animals, and they can uh, sell to the public uh, meat that was that they processed. Otherwise, if they're not USDA inspected, they cannot sell to the public. They can only process for a specific customer that you brought your own meat in. Um, if they uh, if they maintain that uh, that you know USDA certification, they have inspectors come in when they do the kill, and the inspectors actually grade the beef and tell them what it is and stuff like that. If it's prime, choice, select. And uh, and they inspect the whole process. They keep the they keep the producers accountable for that. So you know that's going to be a little more expensive. That meat is, you know. However, if you buy a cow and you have it processed by some kind of a of a meat processor, processing plant, something like that, you're going to have to buy the whole cow, and you're going to have waste. You know, last time Tom and I threw down on a cow together, we decided to go outside the box and have the whole thing. We just wanted the steaks, like ribeyes, strips, and uh, that kind of thing, like some fillets. Everything else on the whole cow, brisket, all of it, gets ground up into chuck. Man, that's some good, good ground beef. But it's expensive because you have a lot of waste. The butchers aren't going to sit there and scrape every bone for you. You know, you're going to have the, they're going to cut up the best they can. You're going to have some bone weight that goes out so you'll probably have like 40 or 50 percent yield um, you know of waste on that on that animal so depending on what you paid for it and the processing and everything like that you know who wants to do that for uh, for selling like catering gigs and stuff so anyway my favorite supplier for the public is going to be Sam's Sam's Club because you can walk in there and they have cases of meat you can be a little bit choosy when you buy by the case. Like you can go, they'll usually bring out a couple cases for you, the butcher will, or the, the guy in the back, and, and you can kind of pick through them, whatever. And you're going to get a pretty regular price. You're not going to get like a huge discount, 
but it'll be cheaper than buying it, you know, by the pound, uh, one at a time. You know, my second favorite is if you have a, a meat market in your local grocery store and there is a guy that's like the manager of the meat department that you can talk to, you can develop a relationship with that guy and usually get a pretty good price. You know, the last time I was doing it, I would have a whole case of pork butts. They would grind them for me and they would add pork, like if I wanted to make sausage. And I would walk out of there with about a 70-30 or a 60-40, uh, you know, meat to fat ratio, which is what I like for sausage. I wouldn't have to do any grinding myself. It made it really easy. I'd walk out of there with about 90 or so pounds of, of pork and sometimes a little more. And uh, I could make 25 pounds of one thing and split the rest of it up into little pe little batches, you know, and that worked out really good for me. So it's really good to have a connection like that with your local grocery store. Um, the other thing you can do, the third thing on my list is if you're gonna start catering and you're looking for, uh, you're looking for like maybe uh, a few hundred pounds a month, let's say. You're not wanting to get a lot going, but you kinda, you never know, you might get a large order. So you can actually get set up with somebody like uh, Cisco or US Foods. A lot of times we'll have what they call a pick and pull where uh, you can go in, you can order ahead. Um, you actually have a wholesale account, but you can go in there and order smaller quantity, like a, two cases of pork and a case of brisket, let's say. Um, you know, you can go in there and pick that up once a month, something like that. Uh, you pay cash at the register, but you still kind of get this hybrid sort of a wholesale price. And then my, my the, the most volume, like my fourth one on the list, is going to wind up being actually getting an account with Cisco, U.S. Foods, somebody like that. Um, I like that uh, for doing like regular cooks. If you're going to do closer to a thousand pounds a month or more, this might be the best way. Um, you're going to go ahead and fill out a credit app or something like that if you want them to bill you. Um, if you don't want to pay tax and you're set up with your county um, slash state uh, to get out with your tax-free status, um, you're actually going to give them a tax number and stuff like that. And you're going to be able to buy that meat at a, whole, at a better wholesale rate. Um, you can set up to, to like pay like COD with some meat suppliers to where you don't have to have uh, an open account with them. That's actually my preferred method because I hate having to remember to pay some vendor, you know, 30 day, within 30 days. I would rather just pay and be done. You won't really be able to use a credit card every time in this situation. They're going to want to check um, just because they don't want to pay the credit card fees, let's say. Um, so, and then of course, the more volume you do, you can kind of keep climbing that ladder. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you have any questions or anything about it, hit me in the comments on YouTube here, or you can comment on uh, my Instagram or something like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Leave us a review on this podcast and uh, let us know what else you want us to talk about. And we'll go from there. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.